perfect will of God, right on time, nothing's out of cater, patience waiting upon his promise, promise he would come. <coughs> well, we're still dipping down in the meal barrel. I guess we'll try to dip down in there again tonight. He promised it never run dry. I said, oh, God. Seven years, three days a week, Lord. Hundreds of messages now. Amen. Lord, come on. I'm quick. Amen. At least this meal barrel will run dry. We just keep dipping down here and getting a little bit more. Amen. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Thankful for this blessed old meal barrel. Amen. Keeping us in this time of famine and drought. Yes. You appreciate it. Yeah, well, I suppose my was try to say a little something about this subject on Bible prophecy. <coughs> I said I wasn't going to preach this morning. I got kind of religious. Oh, oh, oh. Damage my throat. Oh. You know, it's amazing how poor in spirit you feel. You oh. think, God, surely, I, I, what can I say this morning? I don't know what to say. Oh. And then you get up here and you get to feeling religious. Oh, yes. you get to, oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I guess maybe because the Lord won't heal me right now, I guess he knows that I'll just make a mess out of myself. <laughs> maybe he wants me to stand still, you know. But surely the way I get to feeling sometimes, I just hard tell him what I would do if I had good legs to run and jump. <laughs> Well, maybe he wants me to act at least a little bit dignified. Not act so foolish. You know, sometimes you get to act foolish anyway. Well, it, you know, it's just the good. You just, somehow you just got to give vent to it. I like it's a whole lot like Brother Brandon. He first started out preaching. And he just hand sprang right over the pulpit. Yes. Leapfrog right over the sacred pulpit. Now you know if you had ministerial papers. <laughs> and you knew some Greek words and had pretty good command addiction, you know, you couldn't leapfrog over the pulpit. <laughs> Huh? And if you did, your wife would dress you down when you got home, and she'd sure never do it again. Because all the ladies would frown upon it. She'd frown upon it. But I remember one time he leaped all over the pul pulpit, <coughs> shouted down the aisle, still preaching, and came back and started speaking in tongues and gave the interpretation to it before he got back to the pulpit. Right. Right. And his wife, Meaty, was standing there with the baby shouting. Yes. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes the people following Brother Branham forgot what kind of a person he was. Amen. And I find a lot of the people following Prophet now, their services is just as starchy and cold as the old Baptists themselves. Yeah. I think it'd do them good to get some of those tapes out. That's right. Amen. And remember the, the excitement and the exuberance of the great prophet of God. That's right. And he wasn't ashamed to worship the Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. And I remember when I sat behind Brother Branham a few times in services, he said amen more than anybody. He patted his foot more than anybody, and when they had testimony service, you could never beat him to his feet. And so I think he was a good example. And I love to see people worshiping the Lord. I, 
I know that people have never seen anybody worship the Lord. It's kind of strange, a little hard at first. But then, if you're a child of God, you're not there a few minutes till you get to liking it. You get to liking it. Why? It's because you're made up to worship the Lord. But we have to learn how to worship the Lord. He wants you to make love to him. So in order to do that, you just got to forget about everything else and just love. And what a wonderful thing that is to just not know there's anybody else around and just make love to the Lord, worship the Lord. Now, he receives that because he said, They that worship me must worship me in the Spirit. You've got to get in the Spirit to worship the Lord. Now, he'll listen to you, but for him to really enjoy the worship and receive it from you as a sweet smell and fragrance, you've got to get in the Spirit. And if you'll ever accomplish anything, even in the natural, you'll have to get in the spirit of it with the ball game or dancing or whatever it is. They've got to get in the spirit of it. And I remember there's been neighbors around here have come by the building here when they had service, and I've heard them remark, and I've kind of chuckled about it. They said the strangest noise proceed out of that building. <laughs> He said, I wonder what they do in there. They ought to come in and see. <laughs> now, see, if they'd read the Bible, they'd see that that's the way that it was in the Bible. That's the way that it'll be in heaven. Amen. Just hallelujah. Glory to God. Praises to the Lord God continually. So we, we want that kind of a noise. Amen. Now, how did you enjoy the word this morning? Hey, Let's uh, open our Bibles then, and let's open to Daniel two forty four and read that again, and then we'll just add something to it. I'd have Brother Joe in service tonight, Amen. and Willie, we're glad you back home. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How many missed, brother? Amen. He had a great time down in Sunday. Thank you. Gone almost seven weeks. And now Kevin's down there. <laughs> so, Ruthie, we pray that you don't stay down there as long as Bill. <laughs> so we're glad maybe Wednesday night, Brother Bill, as he said in the book of Acts, Brethren, if you got any word of exhortation for these people, stand and speak. So maybe the Lord has blessed Brother Bill down there with something he could say from them little brown-eyed saints. Love the revelation. You got to talking about him, and I get lonesome to see him. This is so precious and so lovable. So I'm sure Brother Bill's had a great time. So we're glad to have each one of you with us tonight. Brother Brothers and Sister Brothers. Amen. And uh, our little sisters in New York, they're here just about every Sunday night. That's right. Glad to have Mom Aiken with us. Amen. And uh, we're very happy to have all of our Spanish brethren. That's right. And I think they need to pray that God give me some Spanish. Yes. Maybe we get enough Spanish people, we start having some Spanish services, brother. Wow. Ah. Well, I believe with all my heart it won't be long that we'll be speaking to a lot of the Spanish people. The Lord showed me a revelation about that, and I believe it, and I'm thrilled to death about it. And when the great hour arrives, the great revelation will break among the Spanish folks. Amen. So, Amen. Not only among them, but it's going to break among all the God's people. Amen. So we look forward to that day. I, I'm just thankful to God that the Holy Spirit draws us all together. It doesn't, uh, <clears throat> we're not, this one is not Spanish, and they're not Spanish, and I'm not American, and you're not German, and you're not Japanese, and you're not Italian. You are a Christian, and you're you're just sojourning through here. We're all brothers and sisters, just sojourning through here. And to me, uh, a Christian, see, he don't have any nationality. He's not nationalized to nothing because his nation, his kingdom is, is from above. 
And so that's why that in the true spirit of Christ, there's no barriers, race barriers, whether you're a Negro Amen. or an Anglo-Saxon or you're Spanish, you're Puerto Rican, you're Mexican, you're an Indian, whatever you are. Amen. We're brothers and sisters, and we just love one another. Amen. So, how many want to love one another? Yeah. Yeah. Just so love one another. And when you get that down in your heart where you just look at one of your brothers and just something in there just melts you down, and you just, oh, well, like our sisters. We love our sisters. I don't know how many men love my wife. And the other day, here's a growing man about my age come in, and so glad to see my wife, he cries. I said, that man loves you. He said, she said, are you jealous? I said, not at all. I said, come to think of it, I don't know how many men's in love with you. I know who Newton Bingham is. You jealous? No, not at least I like you. <laughs> now, you know there's something supernatural about that. Because I love her myself. I can get kind of fucked up. <laughs> As they say over in Trinidad, Jamaica, I get fucked up. But somehow I like it. You know, it's the wonderful about Jesus. Uh, the more you talk about how you love him, I, I just, is this yeah, real? And we're all in love with one man, Jesus. And we're just thrilled about when he, somebody else loves him. Now that, that's supernatural love. That's what I want more of that. Don't you? And just think, in that day, we can take all of our sisters and just love them. Just hug them and pet them and love them with a perfect love. So down here we're restrained from that. But in our heart, we feel the touch of that agape love down in our heart. And this is what has brought us together tonight. Our love for the Lord Jesus and our love for his revelation constrains us that we can't wait each Sunday morning, Sunday night to get together, to gather together to feel that love being shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, what's it going to be when that great capstone just come down and baptizes you Amen. with love, which is power? Amen. Think what you feel then, just vibrating from your soul to the other soul. Yes. We've got glorious things to look forward to. Now, I think we stopped on the ten toes this morning upon this beast, uh, not on the beast I mean, but upon the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of, but the prophet interpreted. So let's read in uh, the scripture, Daniel 2, uh, 244. Daniel 244, and then we'll just read the scripture and get a starting place. 244. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Amen. And the kingdom shall not be left to the other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Amen. Now, <clears throat> let us pray just a minute. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, now, Lord, we pray that you'll bless your word and you'll bless the hearts of your children and you will stimulate the spirits and souls of each one of us with our word that we may be so happy that we're living in this hour to see all these things take place. Bless every person here tonight, Lord, and give us strength and grace in our body and throat to say something for thee. In Jesus' name. Forgive us of all of our sins and our mistakes and our shortcomings. And we come to thee, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, covered by the blood. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> now, we found this morning that this image, 
that King Nebuchadnezzar saw had four governmental powers Amen. that would rule from the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, and that vision and prophecy of the dream, the dream and interpreted being a prophecy, Amen. these four governmental powers were to extend down until the very time of the coming of Christ, the stone That's right. cut out of the mountain without hand, Amen. and it was prophesied in that day <clears throat> when the ten toes formed upon the feet of both eastern and western powers. Now, you know that there was no Russia, there was no uh, uh, Germany, Amen. There was no United States and Europe. There was no Eastern powers and Western powers. Amen. But now that's all you hear is the Western power and the Eastern that power. Right. Amen. Now to think that you're living in that hour to see the fourth beast of the image of Daniel taking place. And as I said this morning and pointed out, there we have one, one scripture that we can watch that these ten toes have not formed upon the feet yet. Amen. Now we're living right in the toes. And we, it is prophesied that the Lord, the stone, Christ, will come at the time of the formation of these toes and will smite the image in its feet. He doesn't smite it in its head or in its chest or its thigh, but it is smoten by Christ in its feet. Now, because you can see what a great fall it's going to make because it's going to be hit in its feet. Now, we can watch the papers and the news media and the government to how they're, they're shifting together now, and we will see... <coughs> these governments form, and there will be ten governments, ten kingdoms, ten dictatorships will raise up upon the earth that will make up the ten toes, or it's uh, the same as the ten horns upon the fourth beast. The ten horns and the ten toes are the one and the same. Now we find out that this last fourth kingdom is divided in uh, eastern and western powers. See? Now if you turn over in Revelation, I don't think we quoted this scripture this morning. Over in Revelation, I keep the place there. Revelation uh, 12, we'll read. <coughs> Revelation 17, 12. And incidentally to, our, to those of uh, a few precious saints that have just come out of the Roman Catholic Church, I suppose probably you know by now, or you're learning if you ha haven't known it by now, Revelation 17th chapter is the picture of the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant part of daughters. Amen. And in verse <coughs> 12, it says, And the ten horns, now these are the ten toes. That's right. Here it's ten horns, but yeah. in Daniel, the scripture we just read, were the ten toes. <coughs> now, now this these horns is up on the fourth beast, and that fourth beast was Rome. Is that right? Amen. So now we're talking about the, Ro the Roman Empire, Amen. which is not the, the pagan Rome now, but the papal Rome. It's deadly wound is healed. So now this fourth Roman power it's raising up has ten horns upon, upon its head. The ten horns with thou thoughts are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, 
but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Now, notice here, these are the ten, ten toes which has not formed upon the feet yet. Now, this proves that because this fourth beast, the Roman spirit, the Roman empire, that had ten horns upon its head, these ten horns, John said here, Jesus said to John as he wrote this, are ten kings. <coughs> which have received no kingdom as yet. Now notice here, they are not truly kings because they receive power as kings. Now they're not kings, but they receive power as kings. That's, that's a lot of difference, you see. And what makes them kings, he tells us here, they will be given power as the king. That's right. Now, a king, he has supreme authority. Nobody Amen. tells him what to do. Amen. He doesn't have to ask the Congress or a Senate Amen. any kind of decision he wants to make. Amen. Now, notice here, there's ten powerful governments. Yes. This will be the most ten powerful governments of the world. Yes. I'll not try to name them all. Because there's one thing that I strive not to do is to try to put what I think into it. So therefore, I think it'd be safer for me as a servant of God because what I say goes down on magnetic tape and then it'll be listened to someday. So I would rather wait until these ten toes are formed and uh, then let us watch and see. At that time, we'll be able to name them because they'll be manifested. But there will be ten nations that will raise up that will be given power by this fourth beast yes. Yes. to rule and reign with the beast with great power and authority as kings. But <clears throat> they'll not be kings. They'll be dictators. That's right. That's right. They'll be dictators. Amen. Now verse 13. <clears throat> These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. That's right. yeah. Now notice here in Revelation 13 chapter, we found out this morning that this deadly wound, it had a deadly wound. That's right. This beast had a deadly wound. Amen. And then it was healed. Amen. And then it was, when it was healed, it said that the whole world wondered after it. Right. Right. Now we find out here in Revelation 17, it sure is healed. It's so healed, yes, sir. and it has such an influence and power yes. over the governments of the world <coughs> that they are so influenced yes. Yes. by this beast that these great powerful governments give their army, their, their power and authority that they have as individual governments, yes. they give their armies money, Every bit of power that's invested in each one of their nations, they give that unto this beast. No wonder the Bible said, who is able to make war with the beast? Now, what nation is it that's going to raise up and make war with such a powerful beast as this when all these great nations have given their power unto him? Notice that they have one mind. Amen. Goes to show you that they're coming into unity. Yes. The nations of the world are coming into unity. Amen. And they are going to give their governmental power, the power that's in each nation, they are going to give that unto the beast. Amen. Amen. See, they're going to give their strength and their power unto the beast. Now, look here, children. They're talking about the great minds, the CIA of the United States, Central Intelligence, that gathers all the information that has spies in Russia and China and everywhere. They, and, and, the, and I read these news magazines, the best ones of them to keep up on these things. They 
<coughs> President Nixon right now is trying with great strategy to keep China and Russia from war. Now they've almost had war now for the last several years. Probably you don't know about it. But we've watched that how that Russia has massed lots of rockets, lots of heavy artillery. I don't know how many regiments they have stationed at the 5,000 mile border of China, Red China and Russia, the sickle and the hammer. God's servant to destroy the Gentiles. They're at one another's throat. They have been almost on the verge of a nuclear disaster. In fact, even the great one of the great leaders of the commun of communism in Russia fell out the United States about three or four years ago or two years ago. Several times he's done it. This, he put feelers out to see whether or not <clears throat> when China a few years ago in 68 or 69 set off the first hydrogen bomb, right. shook Russia up. That's right. That's right. And Russia had it in her mind to go in and partly destroy certain amount of China to, to, to give them uh, such a blow that would set them back in their nuclear uh, capabilities of destroying and harming Russia, they was going to slip in and give them enough of a blow with their hydrogen weapon to destroy them, not completely, but destroy them enough where they could not have any harm against Russia as far as nuclear power. They was going to destroy their wow. nuclear facilities. Yes. United States let them know that they wouldn't stand still for that for a minute. That's the truth. That if they did, they would take on the possibility of a nuclear war with the United States because they would not stand by and see the peace of the world destroyed and that fallout being carried to the other nations of Asia and destroying the people with fallout. And you know how dangerous that is. So now still, United States and the great government minds of Europe are scared to death that Red China and Russia, and of course you've seen the the pictures, I guess, if you've read the magazine, how that they have already had several clashes. The Russians and Chinese hate one another, and they've had some terrible scrapes right at the border, which looked like it was going to set it off. And United States now has a hotline straight to Russia. And they are getting one to Peking, China. Because the United States is trying to stand in between Russia and Red China from a nuclear war. And the, and the CIA are predicting that there is a 50-50 chance that any day Russia and China will go to nuclear war and it may the whole thing into an atomic disaster. And they expect that a 50 50 chance. And so, if you'll notice, your president Nixon is trying to keep in between these two great powers from having a nuclear war. But there will be no conflict between Russia and Red China. I'll flat out predict, not prophesy, but I will predict that the way that I see the Bible, there will be no nuclear war between Red China and Russia. They'll, uh, they might have a little border scrape, but they will not have any war. They won't have it. I don't care what they say. Because it doesn't fit in the scripture. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the Bible says here that the ten nations the ten nations of the world, there will be ten nations that will give their power under the beast. Yes. And when that happens, the Bible said that all of the people of the world wandered after the beast, yes. after he was healed, and said, who in the world is able to make war with him? That's right. 
So the most powerfulest thing in the world is not Russia. It's not Red China, but it is the Pope. Now, I know that people in America is not going to believe that, but it's the truth anyway. We're going to find it out. And it doesn't make any difference what it looks like. It may look like that Russia is going to be. It may look like Red China is going to, going to be the, the, the beast. They'll be the one to take it, but it will not. Why? It, it don't look like it now, does it? And the nations don't believe it, do they? If I told them that, they would believe it, would they? But God said he would put in their heart to do it. God's going to do it. God is going to put it in the heart of Red China. That Red China don't know this yet. God's going to put it in the heart of the Russians to do it. No, no, right now, if you ask them, they'd laugh in your face. Us give our power to the Pope, far be it. But God, one of these days, that old boy's going to lay down on his bed, and he's going to wake up in the, in the morning with a, with a revelation of inspiration. Huh? Why, well, as the Bible says, God would put it in their heart to give their power unto the beast that the word of God might be fulfilled. So it's going to be that way, isn't it? Red China's not going to do nothing. Russia's not going to do nothing. God is going to cause them to give their power unto this beast. The ten toes, the ten horns, are to receive power as king. Now, I tell you, this beast is sure going to be a powerful fellow. Russia's awful powerful nation. Red China, I don't know how many millions and millions of soldiers they have. Russia's scared to death that they got so many soldiers they could just swamp them to pieces with regiments. Millions and millions and millions of soldiers. They just stand and kill them. Chinese soldiers all day long by the hundreds of thousands who wouldn't bother. So, and on top of that, they have nuclear power. Red China has all kinds of silos now with them rockets setting right for Leningrad. Leningrad. They have all kinds of rockets right there. China's got them just pointing toward all in cities. And now Russia, the, the old Russian bear, is so frustrated. They don't know what to do. They, but they don't know that the God of heaven has a plan for them. He's going to put it in their hearts one of these nights when they go to bed. He's going to put it in their hearts to wake up and say, you know, this Pope is not such a bad fellow. Huh? Now let's look over and let's look. We're going to talk about this. How many like to talk about this beast? Amen. Now we're going to see how how great this fellow is. Let's look over in, in Daniel seven and eight now. Oh. Now we're going to see here Daniel talking about some of the characteristics of this beast. Amen. that Russia and China and all these great nations are going to give the power unto them. Amen. After this I saw in the night vision, behold a fourth beast, now that fourth beast, now what is that? That's got to be Rome, right? Dreadful and terrible. Now we're going to see how terrible this Pope is going to be. Yes. So he's going to be dreadful and terrible. Strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and breaking pieces. For any, it just don't have teeth, but it's got iron teeth. He's terrible. He's dreadful, and he's not just strong, but he's strong exceedingly. It's going to devour and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Now notice here, 
said it was the birth different from all these other three beasts. That's all. That it was so terrible that it was completely different than the other beasts. So then it is the fourth beast from then it. They that were before it, and it had ten horns. Yes. This beast had ten government powers, ten government powers that received kingdom with the beast right. for 42 months. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. These governmental powers are, are, are going to receive power as kings one hour with the beast, right. which is 42 months, three and one half years. These governmental powers are going to give their power over to this fourth beast, yeah. which was spirit exceedingly terrible, mm -hmm. and just trampled down and devoured the people. Yeah. Brother. Brother and sister, you and I, yes, sir. thank God, have got a way out of here. Because this is going to be the most horrible thing that has ever happened in the entire history of the nations of the world. Did I consider the horn? Well, we don't. Well, yeah, let's read that. We're not in no hurry, are we? I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. See? Another little horn. Now, this is the beast. Yes. Here's this beast. Before whom there were three of the first horn. Now, see, yeah. this fourth beast, Rome. Yes. Before whom three, there were three of the first horn. Now, there's something I can get into about the history. Of another king there that took this place, but oh, it takes long. And I'd have to make notes on it, see the names and everything. So we'll just roll well, that maybe some other time to get it. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Yes, yes, yes. See? Now let's hold that. This little horn is none other than the Antichrist. That's right. Amen. And he's going to speak great things. See? He's going to be a king. He's going to be a person of great intelligence. Amen. Great oratorical power. Because he had a mouth yes. speaking yes. great things. Yes. Amen. It's going to be a person. He's given a mouth to speak great things. Yes. See? Notice here, he's going to be a great supernatural intellectual giant Amen. because what influences the United Nations? Yes. They send the most greatest intellectual orator that their nation has. Amen. And they are able with their mouth to persuade the, the other nation to go along with their decision. That's right. See? That's right. And that's why that Israel produced and this uh, man that they sent to the United Nations which great things flowed out of his mouth and he just smothered Russia right. and uh, what was his name? Eben. He was so anointed with words that come out of his mouth, he flabbergasted the, those great intellectuals there. Now, this man, now notice even, not to show you this, when we have presidents, the presidents have got to be orators. They've got to have great intellectual minds, and they pit them together on television to see which one of them has the greatest intellectual power. And the natural man listens to the intellectual. They are persuaded by your, their, your intellectual power. But the spiritual man and woman cares nothing about intellectual power. It's the Holy Ghost that persuades them. 
But here is a man, a person, that has such a mouth that it speak great things. This man's mouth is so great that he persuades Russia, China, and all the nations of the world, he persuades them into a perfect peace and a utopia for three and one half years. Amen. He gains all the power of their army and all the power that's invested in their nation because he is such a preacher yes. Yes. of intellectual power Amen. that his mouth persuades the great governments of the world to give their power Amen. to him. Amen. You talking about talking, this fellow is going to be really talking. Amen. Don't you think that's pretty great? That he can talk these governments out of their power? Talk them into giving to them their power? That he was given a mouth speaking great things. Now, he never had this mouth. It was given to him. Right now, this beast, this power, this man doesn't have this mouth. Neither does the nations of the world have a desire to give their power unto any man. But just as the nations of the world are, are, are going to receive the thought, are going to receive the inspiration to give their power to the beast, so will this person, this little horn, is going to be given a great mouth to speak great things. That's right. Yeah. All right, now, we'll, let's talk a little bit more about this great orator. Now, <clears throat> he's going to have to be a great intellectual giant. He's going to have to be a man who, who will be given power of great intellectualism, great speeches, great wisdom, great psychology because he is going to sway the mind, the governmental minds of the world. Amen. Amen. Now, I believe that it's going to be a pope. Amen. Amen. Say, well, which one is it? I, I don't know. But let me just inject something Amen. here. Glory to name, Lord. I believe more than likely that this pope will die. Amen. Now, he may not die. He may be the one. I don't know. God ain't told me. But let's just peradventure and just assume a little bit. Let's say that this Pope here, he dies. He doesn't seem to me to be the one. Oh. Now, there will be a Pope chosen. The next one will be him because it's too late. That's right. That's right. The next Pope will be the man of sin. That's right. That's the right. next Pope will be the little horn. That's right. The next Pope will be the Antichrist the son of perdition. Yes, yes. And let's say that he comes out of America. I yes. believe he will. Yes. Now, whoever he is right now, no doubt he doesn't know. It. But there will be a power and anointing come upon him from the devil, don't you think the devil ain't smart? Oh, he was a cherubim. He was a great ruler in heaven. And this pope that's to be elected will be given a great mouth to speak great things. Be a great intellectual giant. Now I quote Brother Branham. 1956 on spirit on the uh, I can't uh, remember the name of that tape it escapes me right now anyway I've got it wrote down sometimes you ask me before I can give it to you but I quote brother Brandon he said I believe one of these days according to Bible prophecy he said Bible prophecy that when that Pope is taken out of the United States and put over there according to Bible prophecy, there will come a persecution that will drive the true church together and she'll be cemented together 
by an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and God will raise up a powerful church. Unquote. When, Brother Van, when that Pope is taken out of America, put it over there according to Bible prophecy. All right, now, let's just say he comes that way, and I believe it will. There will be a Pope chosen out of the United States and will be put over in the Levantican. There will come an anointing upon that Pope, an inspiration upon him. He won't know these scriptures at all. He won't know this. But there will come an anointing of inspiration upon him. He will be given all once a great mantle. And he'll begin to move that into politics. And he will be inspired then to influence the government powers to give their powers unto him. And he in return as the head of a one world government one world government will give them power to rule and reign with him as kings for one hour. That's 42 months. That's three and one half years. Now this little horn, he's called the little horn. Now let's look at verse 25, and we'll see Daniel speaking some more about him. And he, he, this little horn, this beast, shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Yes. Yes. Looks ah. like they trouble down the road. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 I tell you, it looks like they straight like trouble down the road. Yes. He shall wear them out. That's what it says. Wear them out. The saints of the most time and to think to change times and laws mm. yes. said he could even change yes. times and laws yes. Yes. looks to me like he had power to even change constitution if you wanted to he could change the laws of the lands of the government change time he had power so much Oratory powers in such great mouth that he even began to speak against the Most High God. And then he turned on the saints of the Most High God to begin to wear them out. You think this place yet? This is proper. And they shall be given unto his hand. Who? They. The saints shall be given unto his hand. Until a time, times and dividing of time. Now that's times and dividing of time. That's three and one half years. Amen. That's 42 months. Amen. There will be the saints upon the earth. Amen. They will be given unto this man yes. to do with whatever he wants to do. Amen. And the Bible said he's going to wear them out. Honey, I got good news for you. You ain't going to be here. Why I feel quickening power. That's I assure you, as God's servant, you will not be here. No, he's going to wear, it's going to be given, the saints are going to be given unto him, but it's going to be the remnant of the woman's seed. It's going to be the foolish virgin and the 144,000 Jews. They will be given unto the Pope. And he will martyr and kill them by the tens of thousands. 
children. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Amen. Now, therefore, I believe that the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe, now, this is the hairline. It's so close. The bride is living in the lap over. We're Gentiles is over. We're out of the seventh church age. We're over in the bride age. And we're lapped over in that now. Now, there's just a hair's breadth of the catching away of the bride. Just as the Pope and the World Council of Churches begin to lay their hand upon the bride and begin to martyr the bride, Jesus said, except that day be sure to be no place saved alive. Right then, the Lord is going to catch his bride off the earth because he's not going to let them go through that. So immediately, immediately when that beast begins to tread down the saints, yes. the bride is going to be caught away. Lord, 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 Lord. Now, I know that the deliverance ministry that claims to be deliverance ministry, on the earth, I hear them on the radio, every one of them are getting ready to do great work for the Lord in the tribulation. I got sad news for him. That Pope is going to wear them out. They're going to find out that the Holy Ghost, if they think they got, is not going to carry them through that because the whole, there's no Holy Ghost on the earth in the Gentiles. The only one that have the Holy Ghost is 144,000 Jews. And there'll not be one Gentile preacher no, no, sir. giving the Pope any hard time. No, but I got two brothers that's going to give him a hard way to go. Amen. All right. Oh, now, we see that this person, this little horn, is going to be of great intelligence intellectual power he's going to be a great or a great orator he's going to have a mouth speaking great things he's going to start a persecution he's going to be start slaughtering the saints of god he's going to change times and laws he's going to do a lot of changes he's going to wear out the saints of the most high god for three and one half years Brother, they're going to run for their lives. The Bible said that it was a time of trouble like had never been upon the face of the earth. And Brother Branham said there was not any letters in the alphabet that could form a word to describe how terrible the tribulation is going to be. And when I think of my precious brother, like the one I met at the, at the garden in Israel, Oh, he was eating up everything. But then when, then he asked me a question. He began to tell about what a great thing, a work he was going to do in Israel for the Lord during the tribulation. And he believed that they would be taken out in the desert there, around the Dead Sea, and would be protected there. And I got to say it. And so I said, brother, I said, God bless your heart. I said, you can't make the scriptures go together any other way. And then uh, he began to really lay into me, you know, real sweetly. And I quoted to him some scriptures, and he just got all messed up. I said, brother, dear, the Bible says that they was caught up to meet the Lord. The scriptures run together. Amen. And I said, now, brother dear, you tell me this. You said that there's no difference in the Jews, that all these Jews are accepting Christ now, that they're not under a different covenant. They're all under one thing. I said, would you please explain to me Revelation 7, 
Who are those Jews? 12,000 out of all the tribes, 12 tribes, 12,000 out of every tribe, 12 times 12 is 144,000. We just had to walk away and leave it alone. But you see, so many wonderful, precious brethren, God's children, have got their mind, they, there's the dangers of a made up mind. They got their mind made up that they're going to do a great work for the Lord during the time of the reign of the Antichrist. They know there's going to be an Antichrist. During the reign of the beast. But the bride is not going to be here. She's going to be caught out of that. But the tribulation saints, the Gentiles are going to go through it. But the Gentiles do not have one speck of the Holy Spirit to help them or comfort them. They, they, over, they overcome the beast and are martyred. They overcome by their faith in the Word of God. They are overcoming by the message that they heard from their bride and lay their lives down as a martyr to, to escape the judgments of God. Now notice here about this terrible person. Yes. That's going to do these things. Now, let's turn over and we'll get another scripture to show you how great his mouth is going to be. And we'll go back to Revelation 13, chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. You're talking about a preacher, he's going to be one. Amen. Now, verse 4 of Revelation 13, after this deadly woman was healed, well, they said, who, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, there's nobody able to make war with him. There can't be no more war. Right. So they're all going to say, peace, 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 Amen. peace. Now, you, the bride's going to see that. Yeah. The bride's going to be here when they say, peace, peace, peace. Right. So we're going right, we are going right up as, as just as soon. Just as soon. As the 144,000 receive the gospel from the bride, the rapture takes place, right. and the time of Jacob's trouble sets in. The rapture's gone. Amen. Who's going to make war with him? Verse 5, And there was given unto him a what? Amen. Speaking great things. Amen. And blasphemy. Yes. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. 42 months, that's three and one half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Amen. To blaspheme his name. What's his name? And his tabernacle. I want to get on that one. Oh my God. Yes. Blaspheme his tabernacle. Yes. 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 And then the dwell in heaven. I can get off the dwell. All right, now you see what a great person he's going to be? Yeah. Now, isn't that going to be exciting as we watch now? Yeah. Watch this Pope oh, die, yeah. and then we'll watch and watch the Cardinals as they get ready to elect the man of sin. Yeah. Now here, you can watch that. Oh, and I'll permit you to watch it on television. <laughs> <laughs> now, to think that this is ready to happen. Yes. That we can see this take place, read it in the Bible, and see it take place before our eyes. This man of sin beginning to raise up, and you watch him as he begins to be anointed. See? Oh, we've got great, great things to watch how they all come together. Now, notice here, this little horn, is called the little is called the little horn of Daniel seven. Amen. He's called the beast of Revelation thirteen to Revelation seventeen to Revelation nineteen. Amen. He's also called the false prophet. Yes, and he is called in the Bible the man of sin. Amen. Now let's run a little further about this great person and just pin him down and name him. Name him so that we'll see him real good. God. Now we'll have to go to Second Thessalonians to get a name for him. Second Thessalonians. That's 
right before Timothy, 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day, we use the scripture this morning, shall not come except there come a falling away first. Amen. And we have just come through that, haven't we? Amen. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Now notice here, when they begin to fall away from the faith yes. that Malachi 4 and 5, Elijah brought, Amen. the church world, right? Yes. Then there will be a revealing. Yes. Amen. There will be a time of revelation being preached. When the man of sin will be revealed to you. How many believe he's been revealed to you? We see this coming to pass right right before your eyes. Yes, Now I said it's that man of sin, the man of unbelief in the Holy Ghost, be revealed. Now the only way it could be revealed is by revelation. Is that right? And it's going to reveal him. It's going to reveal him who he is. He's going to be revealed. The Bible said here through Apostle Paul as the son of perdition. Now let's look at the son of perdition. Now notice the son of perdition is also called by Paul the mystery of iniquity. That's right. Yes. Amen. Now notice here that Christ came, God tabernacled in human place, and he was the mystery of God revealed. Is that right? Now here we got another man. Now notice you had a Cain and you had an Abel, didn't you? Is that right? Then you come on down with uh, uh, Jacob and an Esau. Then he come on down with the Jesus and the Judas. Yeah. Yeah. Now notice here, God tabernacle in human flesh called Jesus. Yeah. He was the mystery of godliness. Yeah. He was the mystery of godliness. Yeah. See? Yeah. God manifested in his human flesh. Yeah. Yeah. This man, this beast, this little horn, this false prophet is none other than the son of perdition. Amen. He's none other than the mystery of iniquity himself. Amen. Now, if Christ is the mystery of God, then he is the mystery. Uh, if Christ is the mystery of God, Amen. as he said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. All right, then. If he was the Son of God, the mystery of godliness, in other words, the revelation, the only way that you can see God is when you see Jesus. Now, Jesus is coming again the second time in a mystery. In a mystery. Now, it'll take a revelation to see because he'll be hid in human flesh. Right? Now, the Apostle John said, any spirit that don't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he is an antichrist. Now, this son of perdition, he will be the mystery of iniquity. Amen. 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 Now, just as Amen. Jesus Amen. is manifested in human flesh Amen. as the mystery of godliness, Amen. in other words, the fullness of the Godhead Father, the fullness of God is to be manifested in human flesh. Amen. We are to have a ministry just exactly like the Lord Jesus. Amen. All that God was, he poured into Christ, and all that Christ is, he's going to pour it into the bride. Now, if that's so with the mystery of godliness, then this little horn, this false prophet, this beast, this man of sin, he will be the mystery of the devil. 
the devil will come down in human flesh and hide in a body. Is that right? That's terrible, ain't it? The son of perdition, the mystery of iniquity, Satan manifests in flesh. Jesus said in John 8, 44, he said, Ye are of your father the devil, for he is a liar from the beginning. He's the father of the lie. Now listen. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11, right down underneath this scripture. He said, For this cause, because, this cause, what cause? Because they did not love the truth, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. This sign of perdition, this little one, this man of sin, is going to tell a lie. This mystery of God and it is going to be speaking the truth. Jesus said, when Pilate said, Are you a king? Thou sayest, For this cause came I into the world. For this cause was I born, that I might give testimony to the truth. Pilate said, What is truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. The truth and the life. Is that right? So notice here the this mystery of godliness, God revealed the human flesh, will be revealing the truth. The mystery of iniquity will be revealing the light. Jesus said, I come in the Father's name, you believe me not. He said, now another's going to come in his own name, and him ye will receive. This church world, this Protestant church world, this Pentecostal church world, is going to receive this man's message. He'll, he'll sway them all into it. Come on, tell me it is. And then the Apostle Paul said, because you didn't love the truth, God's going to give you over to a strong delusion, and you're going to believe that lie. Now Jesus, just as he stood there on earth, and he said, to them religious people said, You're of the father of the devil, and he was a liar from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Amen. Amen. Now, watch here. Notice here. This person is to be the son of perdition. Yes. Amen. Right? Amen. Satan, the devil, incarnated in this man the Pope, whatever his name will be. I don't know. He may have an earthly name, but I'm going to tell you his real name is Judas. He's the son of perdition. Satan will be incarnated in this Pope now watch this. John 6, 7, and 71, Jesus said, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil? Oh, hallelujah. Said one of you is a devil. Now that word in the Greek, sometimes you need to read what that word means in the Greek, it helps a lot. Because we got a transliteration from the Greek, and it kind of changes the meaning. And it's a pronounced, I believe, uh, di, di 
D-I-A-B-O-L-U-S. Now, that means not a devil in the English translation, the King James Version. It said, I have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. Yeah. But in the Greek, it doesn't say that. It said, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil. Now that makes a lot of difference. <laughs> Judas was not a demon, but he was the devil. <laughs> Think about that in a minute, man. Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil? Now notice over in St. John, the 17th chapter, Jesus said, Father, of all that thou hast given me, I have lost none, save the son of perdition, whom the scriptures foretold. Is that right? Now just think about that. There is no other place in the Holy Scripture where the word D-I-A-B-O-L-U-S Diabolus, or how you pronounce that, nowhere is that word, Greek word, applied to a human. No other place in God's Holy Scripture is that word that Jesus spoke to Judas. Nowhere is that word applied to a human only in the case of Judas. And that word in the Greek implies incarnation of the devil in that man. My friend, this is something. Now, can we go on just a little bit? I can't stop. My Lord, just put chills up my back. Thank you, God. Now, I know it's over Revelation 11. Open your Bible. Now we find out, oh, you don't have to open, I'll just read to you, you don't want to. Now in Revelation 11, we find out that after the bride leaves the earth, this anointing of God on the bride comes on the two witnesses of Revelation 11. See? And they prophesy and do great signs and wonders and miracles. And they preach against the Roman hierarchy. They preach against the government of Israel. Amen. Yeah. And they do such great signs and wonders. Amen. Till finally, the Pope, the beast, yeah. slays them. Yeah. The beast slays them yeah. right in the streets of Jerusalem. Yeah. Kills the yeah. The two witnesses of Revelation 11, which are two prophets with the spirit of Moses and Elijah upon them. Is that right? Amen. Now, I know it's in Revelation 11, it says, The beast that slays the two prophets ascends out of the bottomless pit. Amen. And that beast is the Antichrist, it says. Amen. Now, where is he coming from? The one that slays the two prophets? coming out of a bottomless pit. Right. Now we're going to find out who it is. This beast, this little horn, this son of perdition, this antichrist, this, this mystery of iniquity. See? Now how did he get into the bottomless pit to come up out of it to slay the two prophets? I believe that this one that come up out of the bottomless pit, this beast, yes. is none other than the son of perdition. Amen. Amen. Judas, Amen. the child of the devil. Amen. Amen. Now notice the scripture that makes me see that is in Acts 1 and 25, where Peter and the apostles choosing somebody for the apostleship of Judas. Notice, oh, this is good. Notice that Judas was an apostle. And this man of sin will be an apostle. That's right. Amen. Sent one. Oh, you'll be a preacher. Be an apostle. 
Now notice in Acts 1 25, Peter speaking said about Judas and his bishop, said Judas went to his own place. Amen. 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 Jesus went to his own place. <laughs> and Peter said that Judas went to his own place. Amen. Now where was the place that Jesus went to? It was heaven. Amen. Now where did, Jesus, where, did, where did Jesus go to? He went to the bottom of the pit. Peter said he went to his own place. He went to a bit. This is the beast, the false prophet, the antichrist, the little horn, speaking great things. Now here's something good. Revelation 17, 8 says, The beast that thou saw was and is not and yet he is, and shall ascend out of the bottom of the pit, and go into perdition. Notice here that he come out of the bottom of the pit, he was the son of perdition, and it also it said, the beast, you call him the beast there, see, it said, he was, and he is not, and yet he is, and he shall ascend out of the bottom of the pit, see. And in Revelation 11, he, uh, he ascended up, up out of the bottom of the pit, and he killed the two prophets, right. yeah, slayed their bodies, and left them lay in the streets called, in the great city called Sodom, Jerusalem. Yes. And yes. the beast slays the two prophets. Yes. He was not, and yet he is, yet he is again. Yes, he is. Now, watch this. The beast. That's right. Amen. Now I said he was. Yes. He is and he is not. Yeah. That's, that's kind of mystery. But you know how it's awful good. Yes. Now I notice when, when was he? All right. In the Garden of Eden. That's right. When God was the first messenger of the earth. Hallelujah. The devil came down and incarnated himself Amen. in the beast. Amen. He was. Yes. He was the Amen. devil. Amen. And Jesus said, You are of your father the beast. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The devil, Lucifer, got in the beast. Got impregnated. Right? Now notice he said the beast that sent it out of the bottom of the pit, he was, when he was, Jesus meant it to John that he was in the Garden of Eden. Yes. Huh? Yes. He was, and then he is not. That's right. That is right. Amen. He is not then. Now, after, after he did his job in the garden there, he never stayed in that beast all the time. He come out of it. After he planted his seed in Eve, done his job, he didn't have no more need for that body. That body went on and died. But where did the devil go? He went right into the north, see, in his headquarters as the prince of the power they are. Then what happened? He was, wasn't he? Yes, yes. And then he was not. Amen. Yes. And then Amen. when Jesus came on the scene, yes. Glory he Lord. is again. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 Uh, how is he again? Just like he was before. Yes. He comes right down in Judas. Yes. Incarnates himself in Judas, Amen. and now he is again. Amen. He was, and now he is again. Yes. And Jesus said, I have not a chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil. Amen. Think about it. Who was the devil after? Yes. Right. Walking right around with God, tabernacle, and human flesh. Amen. Sit right down with God's tabernacle in the human place and put his arm around him. The devil hugging Jesus. Come on, let's say it. 
The devil was hugging Jesus. The devil slept with Jesus. The devil ate with Jesus. The devil went fishing with Jesus. The devil preached Jesus. I know some of you don't want to say it, but say it anyway. The devil kissed Jesus. Did he? Did he? He was, and he is now. Jesus said, have not a chosen twelve, and one of you is the devil. When Judas went out and preached, the devil went out and preached. It's just slick. He preached the same thing as Peter and then preached. Peter didn't know he was the devil. James didn't know he was the devil. Nobody knew he was the devil. But the revealed word. They said, well, who is the devil? Said the one I give this salt to. You know, he'll more than likely hand him a salt fork over. You give him a salt. So, I, I assure you that Jesus, the revealed word, is going to tell everybody who he is. You know, this one night he'll be preaching and he'll just pop down in there and give it to him. You know. That is the one I give the stop That's to. Right. You know. hey. Here he is. Hey. You tell him. Hey. All right, now you see there? He was the beast in the beginning. The devil incarnated in the beast. Then he is not no more. And then Jesus comes on the scene. Here he comes again. Comes right down. Comes right in Judas. Amen. And Jesus turned around and said, One of you is the devil. Yes. Now notice here. When Jesus raised up out of the tomb, went to glory, That's right. Peter had them all up there in that room trying to pick out an apostle for the Lord, help him out. Yes, he was. But now you know that Judas went to his own place. Yes. And since he went to his own place, we've got to pick out somebody to take his place. Yes. Of course, he never mounted to nothing. Amen. Jesus don't need us to help him out, does he? No, 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 no. So he was in the beast, and here he is now with Jesus, the devil. Jesus goes away to heaven, to his place. Judas goes to his place. Amen. Amen. Now he is not no more. But now we've got another word here. Yeah. And it says, but yet he is. Amen. Ah. Yeah. Now it's showing you. That in the end time, here we're going to have Jesus back on earth again. Amen. Now, just as sure as Jesus up on earth, the devil, he is again. He is again. Now, what's he going to do? The devil, the devil, is going to come and possess himself in this man. Then he's going to be, he is again. Amen. Then you can see what it's going to be. The beast in the beginning will be the same beast in the end, the devil incarnated in human flesh, another Judas is carried. My Lord and Lord. <laughs> beast that thou sawest was and is not, yet is, shall descend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. This beast, this devil incarnated in the man, Slays the two holy anointed prophets of God that prophesied in Israel. Yeah. See? Absolutely. The same beast that was in the beginning, he turns again and becomes the beast in the end time. Amen. Brother, sister, that is some picture. Amen. Amen. To think that you and I are living on earth. To see this man that's going to raise up possibly here in the United States, Amen. that will be Judas is carried himself again. Amen. That's right. The devil tabernacled in human flesh. Yes. When you see him, he'll be the one that is, the beast that is, 
And to think the same death that was in the Garden of Eden that came in that beast will come in the end time in another beast. And you and I will be living here on earth when that takes place. Well, that's a pretty tremendous thing. Six thousand years ago, that happened. It was, yet is, and yet it shall be again. And when you see that man, the Pope, whoever he is, he'll be given a great mouth to speak great things. The devil himself will come down and incarnate himself in him. He will have the anointing of the devil. He will be the one that will persecute the bride with the world council of churches. Amen. He will be the one that will slay and wear out the saints of the Most High God. He'll begin to blaspheme God, blaspheme his word, blaspheme his name, blaspheme the tabernacle. Yes, yes. Then when he gets ready to destroy the little bride and she slipped off the earth, he vents his anger after the foolish virgin, begins to wear them out and slaughter them by the tens of thousands, and then he turns on the Jews. Amen. He comes down and sits in the temple. Yes, amen. That is right. After he allows the Jews to set up their temple worship amen. again yes. and make sacrifice, amen. he then comes down, yes. walks out in the temple and sits on the throne and makes himself, declares himself to be God. Turns on the two witnesses. Amen. Slays the two witnesses, kills them, lets their dead bodies lay in the streets of Jerusalem. And the people of the world will watch that on television. Will watch those bodies. And there, you know the story how the Bible said, And the Spirit of God came into them after three days and raised them up. And they just descended right there on television. People watching. Sends it right into heaven. How else could the whole world see it? The Bible said the whole world looked upon it. Saw their bodies laying there in the street. And then they sent gifts to everybody on earth, sent gifts to all the governments on earth to celebrate the death of the two prophets. Now, who is it that always done that? Rome. Who is it that always sends presents after enemy was killed? the Rome, Rome. Amen. Friend, we've arrived. Amen. We're going to be seeing these things take place before we Let's sing a hymn. Beast in the beginning and the beast in the end is the same person. Let's sing number 166 when we all get to heaven. That won't be very long. It would be wonderful to be, want to be wonderful to be caught out of all this. Just as soon as they try to destroy the little bride, they're, they're caught up to meet the Lord in heaven. I'm glad I ain't got no work to do in the tribulation, aren't you? Amen. One sixty six. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. <clears throat> Sing. Can't you just see it now? Everybody, maybe old Kenny be in front of me and I'll jump it up. Uh, come on, hunt her down a little bit. Kenny won't see. <laughs> Jump out. Jesus, it's me, Lord. Lord, as far as you can see, is everybody stretching his hand? And all right, just kind of walk into your body. Friend, that day is close to When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Everybody just crying and praising him and worshiping him. And there he is, just walking around among us. And there is the great throng of the saints, as far as you can see.
10,000 times 10,000 thousand ministered unto him. And we are hearing Christ Jesus being preached, eating and drinking the flesh, eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of Man. We now, present tense, have everlasting life. We have resident in us now the power that will catch us up out of the dead. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, of which the second death hath no power, and they shall rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. Now we're going to make this really sing that now. Nothing can be compared. No trial. Whatever it is. It's not worthy to be compared. To stand there among their great victorious strong. Look upon his blessed face. The thing that you can walk up to him. Jesus, let me look at your hand. There is the scar of the nail. You can take his hand and kiss him. Put your arm around him. Put your head over it on his foot. Oh, oh, cry, he said, don't cry. Yes. Put your arm around him. Yes. Put your head over it on his foot. Oh, 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 cry, he said, don't cry. He said, don't cry anymore. He said, we'll be together for eternity. Amen. I just look around you by the thousands and by the thousands of love the Lord. Friend, oh my, and to think that it's just at hand. When our race will soon be over, and we'll see these things we preached about taking place right before us, and then when they come and close the little church down, then the Lord's promised to have something for us short, quick, powerful ministry, sweep across the earth together, a little bride together. Then when you see that ministry move out, you see the tent set up, you see the ministry move out, then it may not be six months. Amen. Six months, maybe not six months, until we'll be caught up to meet the Lord. Thank that, that may not be, may not, this may be our last summer for me. Amen. Not going to be sooner or later. Amen. Prophet said, 77, she'll burn. Amen. So it won't be long. You and I will be looking upon his face. Now, it wouldn't be wonderful for all of us to be together. Amen. And then while the beast is treading down the people with his iron teeth, devouring them and killing them, mommies and daddies and children, see, but we'll be in heaven, in another dimension. Of course, heaven's not where awesome works right here. And we'll be in another dimension, put there by the power of the Holy Ghost, rejoicing for three and one half years. Amen. Oh. Jesus said, well, it's time now the, the, uh, my holy city is ready to be destroyed by Russia. And I said, time, he'll say it's time for us to go back to earth. Here we'll descend out of this other dimension send it down upon the Mount of Olives. And there the beast and his armies, look up there. Them armies up there. They give their power into the beast. Look up there in the heavens just with a thunder rolled back like a scroll. And there we come. 10,000 times 10,000 of the same. Coming down upon the Mount of Olives with the Lord. Friend, the Jews up are waiting on it. The Mount of Oz has already got a crack in it. And it said in that day, the Mount of Oz shall cleave to the east and the west. When his feet set upon there'll be a great valley in between, and a great earthquake. And then the little bride will set up a perfect government that'll be without any sin. 
Amen. And you'll be the one that'll rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Now, won't that be worth it all? <laughs> Let's just sing a chorus as we stand there feet amazing praise. Because that's what's going to put us there, ain't it? Amen. Amen. Now with our heads down. My children, what a blessed time. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. You're blessed. Jesus said, blessed is he that hears the word of this prophecy that you've heard tonight. Blessed is Blessed is He's made a way for you and I to escape this thing. Why shouldn't we pray? Yes. Of all the people of the earth, we could be caught out of the rest of the day that are going to be dead, caught up to meet the Lord in there. Now their heads bowed and eyes closed. Love him with all your heart this week. Live every day that you can for him. Try to do everything you can to please him. And then let us meet back here Wednesday night. With a head bow for the Lord Jesus, I'd like to ask Brother Ken to dismiss us in a word of prayer. Remember Brother McGee, the precious elder brother down in Florida, and give him a safe trip home. Let us pray for one another as we're apart. Brother Ken.